About two years ago, I filmed a video about making soup dumplings for the first time, and in that video, I was drinking a boba milk tea and thought to myself, what if boba dumplings exist? I mean, dessert dumplings exist, Din Tai Fung has taro, red bean, and chocolate dumplings. So what if I combine two things that I enjoy together? If you think about it, this would be the perfect dessert dumpling, because the boba is an equivalent to the meat, and the milk tea is a perfect equivalent to the soup. So then, if you place these components into a pocket of dumpling dough, you make a boba dumpling. But before I continue, let's first explore the of soup dumplings. It's quite simple actually, all you have to do is combine the soup and meat and dumpling dough and boom, you have your soup dumpling, right? Wrong. The real way to make soup dumplings is to first acquire your soup, then gelatinize it so you have this wonderful chunk of solidified soup, add the meat, wrap in dough, and boom, now you have your soup dumpling. So what if I gelatinize a cup of boba milk tea then wrap it in dough? Would I get a perfect boba dessert dumpling? Well, I ended up accidentally stumbling onto this video by Feed Mei Bay, where she made boba milk tea pudding. I need this to work, please. I'm begging you. Oh my, oh my goodness. Like half of it melted, but it kind of worked. That was when I realized that the solution was right in front of me. I didn't have to freeze the milk tea. All I had to do was make it into a pudding. Anyways, quick disclaimer, I filmed this two years ago and at the time bubble dumplings didn't exist. Recently I did a quick search to see if they now exist and they do in Taiwan. Crying boba shalong So I actually cannot believe that I predicted that I predicted the existence of this product before it happened. Step one, get some boba milk tea. You can get whatever flavor you want, but I highly recommend black milk tea. Separate the milk tea from the boba. I got my milk tea from Share Tea. Normally I don't go there, but it was close by, so I snagged it. Wrap your boba in plastic, and then get some unflavored gelatin. We are going to follow at Feed Mei Mei's recipe, which calls for three teaspoons of unflavored gelatin, like so. While stirring your pot of gold, heat up your delicious milk tea for around five minutes, let it cool down, then pour it into your designated cup, place it in the fridge for around three hours, and make sure no one eats it. Step two, while waiting for your milk tea to gelatinize, make your dumpling dough. Honestly, I completely forgot how to make the dough, so I referenced my own video. Oopsie. This calls for 180 grams of flour and 60 grams of hot water. Stir that up with some chopsticks, then knead it like you mean it. Give it a nice massage and shape it so it looks like this. Suffocate your dough, I mean wrap your dough up, and let it rest for 10 minutes. Step 3, take your milk tea out of the fridge. It should be gelatinized as so. Have your little Dairy Queen moment. I've never worked there, so this made me feel so special. Take your boba out and chop half of it. Actually, don't chop it. In hindsight, this is an unnecessary step. I was just experimenting to see which texture I'd like better for my boba dumplings. And... Uh, Two years in advance, now I would like to say that chopping it is completely unnecessary. I mean, I was completely struggling with that, to be honest. But unchopped boba is better than chopped boba. Next step, get your favorite bowl out. I chose this bowl because it reminds me of my brain while I'm trying to edit this video right now. Next, attempt to remove your fresh milk tea pudding out of its cup. It might take a few shakes or two. Uh, watch me struggle. Oh! Lovely. Next step, jiggle your milk tea pudding for the aesthetics, except mine looks wrong. And have a quick taste test to see if this milk tea pudding was worth the hype back in the day. Here I am scooping back the excessive pudding because I accidentally scooped too much. You should eyeball the amount you need, then mix with the chopped boba that you did not chop. Make sure you don't mix it too much or else it will be harder to wrap in the dumpling dough. This is similar to mixing the gelatinized soup with the meat in a regular dumpling. So this is an example of what not to do. Do not over stir like the girl in this video. You do not have to mix it to the point that it looks like slop. Next step, roll your dough into a snake-like shape so that it's about as long as your arm. Tear off small pieces of dough. I like to weigh mine to be around 14 grams, and this is me having a Goldilocks moment. Keep dividing your dough into tiny pieces until you're all done. Make sure you flour your surface again, and here we begin with making the dumpling. To make the perfect dumpling, take a rolling pin and roll your dough so that it is as flat as the earth. If you are a cooking vlogger and need to film your dough with the one hand, this is an example of how to roll out your dough with the other hand. Just like that. Once you've rolled your dough to be as flat as it possibly can, take one scoop of your suspicious mixture and dump it into the middle of your dough, like so. Again, this is why you shouldn't overmix or your filling will be too soupy. 
Create a crimped edge by folding over one side of the dumpling and keep going along the edges, folding and folding and folding until you get around the entire circumference of the circle. Fun fact, in Din Tai Fung, each soup dumpling has exactly 18 folds. I accidentally put too much filling, so this is me dumping some out. Once you are done, pinch the top of the dumpling closed, like so, and abracadabra, you are done, ma'am! Congratulations! You have finished your first boba dumpling. Now start the process all over again until you have finished your dough and your filling. If you find yourself struggling in this process, don't worry, I was struggling along with you. Anyways, story time. One time, I struggled with procrastination and finally edited a video two years after it has been filmed. Now this is another method that I came up with when making these dumplings. Remember when I left half of the boba untouched? Take some unchopped boba and scoop some unused milk tea pudding into your dough. If you can tell, this dumpling looks a lot better especially since the pudding was not overmixed, so it didn't leak out. Never forget to secure your dumplings in the end. When you have finished forming your dumplings, grab a steamer and set your dumplings onto a steamer liner parchment thing, if that's what they're called, or a piece of lettuce like I did if you don't have any. Leave some space between the dumplings and bring the water to a rolling boil before placing the steamer on top. Make sure to cook for around 8 minutes. If you have tirelessly worked hard to complete this dish with me, we shall now enter the final stage, the grandest of all reveals. Okay, I know, I know, this looks sus, but just bear with me. <laughs> Actually, I have no excuse except for the fact that this is my first time making this and I have never made this before and I kind of made this recipe on my own so please feel free to try it and let me know if it actually tastes as good as it looks anyways this is me trying the beloved boba oh that does not look good my face did not like that oh i was showing the tea okay there's tea coming out that means it's actually successful and a little bit of boba in the inside and uh, I apologize, this is me getting so engrossed with eating that I forgot that I was supposed to give my review on a dish that I made. It's a bit of a fail. There wasn't enough milk tea inside. I think it kind of seeped out a bit. So... In conclusion, I kind of failed, especially since I did not fold the dumplings properly and the tea kind of leaked out, so that was definitely all on me. Even though I failed, I want you guys to try it and let me know if it actually tastes good. And if you want to learn how to make soup dumplings, check out this other video.